Hello everybody, it's Mr. Yosef. I'm gonna try my best to walk you through the study guide. Uh, just be patient with me, I'm doing this live. I'm trying not to do this too many times. So we're gonna start off with this wheel. So when you see this wheel, you'll see that it's nine feet tall and that includes the base that is one foot tall. So if we think from the top to the bottom, that is nine feet with this part right here being a foot, that would naturally make this four and this four as well. So remember from the center to the outside of a circle, that's called our radius. So that four can apply to many spaces here. But just remember it's nine feet tall and it's one foot uh, for the base. So we look at this and it says we can do a rotation every 48 seconds. You can spin it clockwise or counterclockwise. And if you get it between two sectors, you can win a prize. So for the first question, which is number two, how far of the graph are the highest and lowest points? Well, if you're all the way up here, you know that the highest point has to be nine feet. And the lowest point on the actual wheel, which I'll kind of use a purple to indicate right here to right here, our lowest will be one foot. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Once again, from the ground to the base of it's one foot, from the top to the bottom is nine. Number three says, how far off the ground is the center of the wheel? Well, if this is the center, and we know from here to here is four, and then the base is one, so that means that this answer has to be five. If I was gonna indicate that with the color, that would be this part right here. We know that the radius is four and the base is a foot. So now we're going to spin this counterclockwise, starting from the wind. So starting from right here, we're gonna go counterclockwise, which means going this way. And we're gonna rotate it for 54 seconds. It says use a highlighter to sketch the angle on the diagram. So before we can actually answer this question, we need to look at this, which mentions 48 seconds. So to go around the whole circle is 48 seconds. So I need to find out some information here. So first of all, I'm just gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. I see that this whole diagram is split up into 24 sectors. So I'm gonna erase all this. So if I think about 24 sectors, if there's 48 seconds in the whole rotation and there's 24 sectors, I know that each sector is two seconds. So to go from sector to sector takes two seconds. I can use the same logic with my angles. So if there's 360 degrees in a circle, and I divide this into 24 parts, that means that I should have what? So 24 goes into 36 once, and then you're left over with 120, and 120 goes into 24 five times, so 15 degrees. So each of these sections are 15 degrees, and each section takes two seconds. Just to show you the same idea with radians, there's two pi radians in a circle, so if you divide this by 24, you'll see that each part is pi over 12 radians, which is also equivalent to 15 degrees. So that's just getting you to see that we know each section is two seconds, 15 degrees, or pi over 12 radians. So now the question says 54 seconds. So if I do 54 minus 48, you're going to see six seconds. So if I was going to mimic this rotation, I know I'm gonna go around the circle once, and then I need to go six seconds. Sorry, that automatically did that. So six seconds, so two, four, six. So I know that this part is where my triangle is, and that's where my journey stops for 54 seconds. So it says, what prize do I win? Well, because I'm right here, I'm between an iPhone X and $500.
And then it says, what radian and degree measure does the wheel rotate? Well, I hope you saw that first time I went around. I went around 360 degrees. And I'm going to highlight this part in red. That was the 48 seconds like to right here. And then after that, I went six more seconds, which are three parts. So one, two, three. And I already said each one of these are 15 degrees. So it's going to be 360 plus 15 times 3, which is 360 plus 45, which is 405 degrees. Or if you wanted to do it in radians, same thing. But this time you would start with 2 pi because that represents 360. And then each one of these pieces, remember, was 12 pi radians. So if each one of those were 12 pi radians, I am going to do plus pi over 12 times 3, which is 2 pi plus 3 pi over 12. And if I simplify 3 pi over 12, that's pi over 4. And then 2 pi is equivalent to 8 pi over 4 if you multiply both of these by 4. And you get 8 pi over 4 plus pi over 4 equals 9 pi over 4. 9 pi over 4 is exactly the same thing as 405 degrees. These are just the two different processes that we use to find out the radius and degree measures. All right? So next we move on to D, which says find all six trigonometric ratios for the angle measure. So when I look at this triangle... I'm going to recreate this again. I hope that you see those three 15 degrees made a 45 degree triangle. So this is when it gets tricky because if you know anything about a 45, 45, 90 degree angle, this is square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, and this is 1. So technically the radius is not 1. The radius is 4. But since triangles are proportional, you can actually just use this ratio. And that's kind of strange to describe. So let me just kind of go down here for a second. So I just told you that this is 1, this is square root of 2 over 2, and this is square root of 2 over 2. But in the actual picture, our radius is not 1. Our radius is 4. So if you're asking why is it 4 again, Let's actually go back here and let's have a conversation about that. This right here we said earlier was 4. And the definition of the radius is from the center to the outside. So wouldn't it make sense that this piece also is 4? So that's where I'm getting the 4 from. So when I go down here, in order to get a 4, I need to multiply this by 4, multiply this by 4, and multiply this by 4. And when you do that, you're going to get 2 square root of 2 and 2 square root of 2 and 45 degrees. So the question said, what is sine of theta? So sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, which is 2 square root of 2 divided by 4, which just simplifies to square root of 2 over 2. So do you notice that that is actually the same answer if we just use this basic triangle that we use. If we do cosine theta, once again, this is adjacent. So cosine is adjacent over our partners, which just also simplifies to this. So it's not actually necessary to use 4, 2 squared to 2, 2 squared to 2. You can actually just use this triangle right here because since triangles are proportional, when you divide their sides are going to get the same value. So I'm just going to go back up, and over here, I'm just going to use the triangle in front of us. So sine is square root of 2 over 2, cosine is square root of 2 over 2, tangent means opposite divided by adjacent. So that's going to be the square root of 2 over 2 divided by the square root of 2 over 2 which just equals 1. Cotangent is adjacent divided by opposite, which is still the same thing. And you get 1. 
Secant is a reciprocal of cosine, so we should just take this answer and just flip it. But we're not allowed to leave our answer with a radical on the bottom. So we multiply the top and bottom by that. And you get 2 square root of 2 over 2, which just simplifies the square root of 2. Cosecant, once again, just flips, flips sine. And you should get the same answer. So I'm going to highlight all the answers real quick. And that's what we do for letter D. All right, so I'm going to erase everything. So if you need it, just go back and rewind the video because uh, we're going to need to clear space for this next one. So I'm going to clear all this and we're going to move on to the next one. Sorry, this eraser takes some time. All right, so our next question now says we spin it clockwise. So we're going the opposite direction that we did originally. And this time we're gonna rotate for 80 seconds. Once again, one revolution is equivalent to 48 seconds. So if I do 80 minus 48, you get 32 seconds. And I already told you earlier that each section is divided off into two seconds. If you remember that, when we did 48 divided by 24, we got each section is two seconds. So if we have 32 seconds left and I divide this by two, do you see how we have 16 sectors to go through? So first of all, I subtracted 48, meaning that I went around once. And then I was left with 32 seconds. And I want to know how many times two seconds go into 32, which is 16 which means I need to go around 16 sectors. So I'm gonna go around once, and then I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. But knowing me, that would be wrong because of course I went counterclockwise. Sorry, I'm so used to going counterclockwise. I should be going clockwise. So let me try that again. So that's one rotation. Then that's, this is, this is one rotation. Then it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we end up right here and we're gonna draw our new triangle right over here. So that is where we land after 80 seconds. So land over here which is between $500 and a TV. So if you didn't like the way that I counted by twos that way, you can actually think about it like this. Half a circle is how many seconds? So if the whole thing is 48 seconds and you know that half a circle is 24 seconds, which then leaves you with eight seconds. So you could have gone right here and then just moved over four times to get the remaining eight seconds as well. So what is the radian measure of this and the degree measure of this? Well, if we look at our picture, we definitely, once again, we went 360 degrees plus, let's highlight this part, this part, we know if this is half a circle, then we know half a circle is 180. And then we did one, two, three, four. And we know that each part is 15 degrees from earlier. So that actually means that we went 60. So if we add all of this together, what are we gonna get? We're gonna get 360 plus 180 plus 60. and that's to double check the math to make sure we're good, you should get 600 degrees, okay? And does, three, does 600 degrees make sense? Well, we know that 360 is a whole circle, 180 is 
half a circle, so that's 540 right there. And then adding 60 definitely does give you that 600. So that's how you would do it if you want it in degrees. If you want it in radians, you know that 2 pi represents 360. You know pi represents 180. And you know that pi over 12 times 4 represents 60. So that's 3 pi plus 4 pi over 12, which is 3 pi plus pi over 3. We're going to divide that by 1. Multiply by 3, multiply by 3. You get 9 pi over 3 plus 10 over 3. And you get 10 pi over 3. And that would be your answer in radians. All right. So now off to our triangle to do our ratios. Well, we know here, if we zoom in, if this is 15, 15, 15, 15, then we know this angle has to be a 60 degree triangle. So I know this has to be the square root of three over two, and this has to be negative one half because my x values in the second quadrant are negative and my y values are positive, and this, of course, is one. So now to answer these questions, you should have square root of three over two, one half, two square root of three over three, and negative two. So I'm gonna skip the work for this and let you kind of think about that and how we did that from class. And then we also have tangent and cotangent. Tangent should be negative square root of three, and this should be negative three square root of three over three. So the last ones I really want to discuss is question seven and question eight. So question eight says we're going to spin this 760 degrees counterclockwise. So once again, I should probably figure out how many rotations that is. So if I do 760 minus 360, I get 400 degrees. So that means I went around the circle once, but I still have 400, which is above 360. So I'm gonna subtract again. And we'll get 40 degrees. So this means that we went around, let's go counterclockwise. So we went around once. So think about why we got 40 degrees here and make sure that makes sense. So if you have 716 you subtract, that's 400. Okay, so that is correct. So we'll rotate once. We'll go around twice, and then 15, 30. So you're somewhere like right over here. Awkwardly right there in the middle. And that is what we called. So if this is 15, this is 15, that's 30. And we know if we go all the way, that's 45. So we're somewhere in the middle there. So that's what the picture looks like. So what radiant measure did the wheel rotate? Well, we know that we did 2 pi once to represent this, plus 2 pi to represent this. But now we went 40 degrees. So to turn 40 degrees into radiance, we would actually have to take 40 and multiply that by pi over 180, because that's how we convert degrees into radiance. So if we simplify this, the zeros divide out. 4 and 18 are both divisible by 2. So you get 2 pi over 9. So we actually have 4 pi plus 2 pi over 9 as our answer. And for 4 pi, we would divide this by 1, multiply by 9, multiply by 9. So you have 36 pi over 9 plus 2 pi over 9, and that gives you 38 pi over 9, which is my radian measure. So think about my reaction to this. When I did 400 minus 360, I kind of freaked out because I was like, gosh, that's not 30, that's not 45. Like, does that even involve that? 
But when you look at this picture, that's not what I asked. We didn't need any triangles. This was literally just asking us how would he convert this 760 into radians. All right. So now we move on to number eight, which will be our last one for today. I'm going to erase everything again. And let's see what it tells us. Consider the point on the wheel that is 135 degrees from the starting point. So somebody asked me in class today, are we going counterclockwise or clockwise? Um, we're going to assume that we're going counterclockwise, but here I guess you can make an argument for both. But let's go ahead and just say that we are going counterclockwise. So if we're going 135 degrees, we know once again that these are counting by 15. So if I'm halfway, I know that's 90. So if I add 90 plus 15, I'm going to add 30 to it, actually. So 15 and 15, that's 120. And then if I add another 15, you get to 135. So I'm going to take this line and put it out here. Everybody see how I used it? I just kind of used that 90 degree angle, this right here. I just kind of used it kind of to help me out, like, oh, that's 90, and I just added the 15s. Okay, so this is where we land. And now the question is saying, what is the distance? So you want to know what is the distance of this. So there's two, points, two parts to do that, two ways to do this. So the first formula we learned about is arc length, which is angle over 360 times 2 pi r. And you have to remember from the beginning of the problem that the radius is 4. That's something that you cannot forget because we're going to actually use it. So you can do 135 over 360 times 2 times pi times 4. And if you simplify this, let me see what I got. I was actually able to get 3 over 8 from this. So this math is going to be a little tedious, so I can kind of show you down here. 135 over 360. 135 is divisible by 5. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I divide this by 5, we got 2 goes into 13, which is 10. So if we have 10, we have 35 left over, which is going to be 27. If we divide the bottom by 5, we got 7 and 72. Then we get 27 over 72. Both of the numbers are divisible by 9. So you get 3 and you get 8. So now when I get here, I got 3 8 times 8 pi. The 8s divide out and you get 3 pi. So the answer is actually 3 pi. You could have wrote it as a decimal or you can, you can leave it like this on the test. So the answer would be 3 pi. So that's how I would do this problem without a calculator. So this is using the arc length formula. Let's say you want to do this a different way. I can erase all this and use this formula. Length equals radiant, radiance time radius length. So if I think about what is 135 degrees in radiance, you can remember from the unit circle that that's 3 pi over 4. So L equals 3 pi over 4 times the length of the radius, which is 4. These cross out, and you get 3 pi as well. That's just another way to get the length as well. So I'm also going to erase that now. Now the last finale, which is letter B, asks us, what is the distance from the ground? So what I'm going to do is we're right here, and I'm going to make a straight line going down because this is what you want to find. So here, we're going to split up this diagram in many pieces. So I'm going to go like this, and I'm going to go like this. And you'll understand why I'm doing this. So first of all, you should know that from here to here, we already said earlier that this is one foot, so you should know that this is one foot from here to here. Earlier, we said that this is also called our radius, which is from the center to the end. So we know that this is also four feet. So 
So all we have to do is we need to find out what this piece is. And I don't know if y'all see it, but you should see this triangle. And if we think about the second quadrant, so remember, this is 90. Do we see that this is 45 degrees? So now we actually care about the length. So we said earlier this was 1 square root of 2 over 2 square root of 2 over 2. But since we actually want the length of this, we know that the radius is 4. So i got to multiply this by 4, multiply this by 4, multiply this by 4. All we care, once again, is about this. And if you do 4 times square root of 2 over 2, you get 2 square root of 2. So this length right here is 2 square root of 2. So our final answer is 2 square root of 2 plus 4 plus 1, which is 2 square root of 2 plus 5. And you could just leave your answer like that since we're not using a calculator. So if you're wondering, why was it that simple? Well, if you know that a triangle, a 45 degree triangle is one square root of two over two square root of two square root of two over two, you know that if the radius is four, all you're doing is you're multiplying each side by four to find the length. That's all I have for you. Please email me if you have questions. I know this video is a little long, but I hope it helps. See you tomorrow.